And hey, welcome back to America's Forum here on Newsmax TV. The Tea Party groups not very happy with John Boehner right now, the GOP leader and the man who is third in line to the throne that has become the Oval Office, facing a lot of heat. Tea Party groups are also infuriated uh, with the Speaker's move to raise the debt ceiling while getting nothing in return. Some of the most upset are moving to oust the Speaker from his post. They accuse Boehner of stabbing conservatives in the back and the, quote, ideologically bankrupt leadership their words. This group we're about to talk to, the GOP of the GOP, must come to an end. Joining me right now to talk about all this is the man at the center of the fight and the controversy, Tea Party leadership spokesman, Rusty Humphreys. Rusty, great to have you with us. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, tell us about what you guys are doing right now, this campaign you started, uh, and what you, hope, what you hope to accomplish. Well, first of all, you mentioned that, uh, you know, that it's that John Boehner sold out conservatives. He hasn't sold out conservatives. He sold out the country. We can't afford this. You know, it was like a couple of weeks ago when they passed a $1.1 trillion omnibus bill and nobody read the bill. How can we afford this? We need somebody that's going to stand up and somebody that's going to be a leader. And we don't have a leader in the Speaker of the House. Now, to play devil's advocate here, Rusty, some folks would say that Tea Party groups are not considering the political realities of doing business in Washington. Well, you know what? That sounds, uh, that sounds great. The problem is, is that somebody has to be an adult in this uh, room and somebody has to stand up and say, I'm sorry, kids, we don't have the money to keep spending anymore. Now, beyond the debt ceiling vote, give us your top three reasons why Speaker Boehner needs to go. Well, I, the, the debt ceiling, of course, the omnibus bill, uh, Obamacare, he didn't fight hard enough against that. But the one I mean, that you, really, you know, and again, mm -hmm. I'm playing devil's advocate here, Rusty, but how do you do more than pass 44 or 43 bills in the House, send them over to the Senate to defund or replace Obamacare? Well, again, you keep fighting and keep fighting, but uh, we've got John Boehner who gives up. He cries too much. Uh, this is a guy that uh, is more interested in in, help, in taking care of his buddies and taking and in, in playing golf. But the one that really got me, the one that really said, okay, I'm in, was when he allowed the cutting of the benefits for our veterans at the same time fighting to keep the benefits for himself and the guys in Congress. It's unacceptable. Now, what was your take on the flip side of this of what Ted Cruz did in the Senate? Listen, uh, we know that we knew he wasn't going to win. Everybody said, oh, he he wasted his time. No, he brought he brought awareness. He st at least stood for something. At least we have some kind of leadership there. Our country is starving for leadership. We don't have a leadership in the president. We don't have a good leader in the, uh, the, the in the Senate. We don't have a good leader in the Speaker of the House. So we need somebody that's going to stand up. Ted Cruz is a good example. We just need more people like that. And, you know, on the other hand, and you look at a guy like Mitch McConnell, who's facing a, a primary fight in his home state, this is the leader of the, of the minority party in the Senate, mm -hmm. a very important guy. Um, he, uh, by all accounts, had to kind of fall on his sword here. Uh, John McCain said it was a heroic act. What's your response? Well, John McCain is, uh, by the way, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, Maricopa County. John McCain, I'm coming after you next. Um, John McCain certainly is no conservative and certainly is no Republican. I wish he'd just sign over to the Democrat Party as soon as he can. Uh, Mitch McConnell, listen, uh, he does have a tough race, and I, I think he's probably going to win that one. But what we're doing with John Boehner, and why we're asking people to go to primaryboehner.com is we need to send a message to all of these guys that have gotten these cushy jobs. They've been there far too long. They don't go back to their districts hardly, and they aren't representing the people. I've been to John Boehner's district. I'm going to go back next week. He hasn't even talked to his people. And so this is a guy that needs to be taken out. I'm sure he's a nice guy. This isn't anything personal. But we need to send a message. Start doing your job and start looking out for the people of the country and quit spending so much damn money. All right. Also, Rusty, let's take a look at this, uh, you know, kind of looking through the, the lens of history here uh, to the 2012, some of the primaries that didn't work out very well uh, for the party. I, I know some folks would have had, like to have some of these more conservative candidates uh, winning these primary races, but do you think that this could be a repeat in, in a state like Kentucky, that uh, you put a guy out there like Matt Bevin and he does a good job of raising awareness and uh, on the issues and stuff, but he winds up losing uh, and then it makes it harder on Mitch McConnell? Do you really think sure. that would serve your interests better? Um, yes and yes. Uh, is this going to make things harder? Sure. We have an establishment that likes the growth of government. Growth of government doesn't uh, hurt John Boehner, gives him more power. Same with Mitch McConnell. We don't want a bigger government. And again, people want to say, well, the Tea Party, they're anarchists. Uh, they, they don't want any kind of it. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying this government has gotten far too large. Taxes have gotten far too high, and this government's become far too powerful. Just look at the NSA, the IRS. Uh, we can look at just uh, stories in the
the news today and just the past couple of weeks. So we are also the grassroots. It's hard. We're going up against establishment. We're going up against big money. But we have to do the right thing. But we also need to keep our eye on the ball and win some of these races, of course. Now, some of the, and I'll let you say the names, but some of these uh, incumbents, members of Senate and the House, uh, have been favorites of the Tea Party in the past, but they have also faced some heat. Give me your list of some of the people who you think are maybe moving in the wrong direction in Congress. No, I mean, listen, the, the list is pretty is pretty large. You know, the one thing I'll talk about with John Boehner is one of the reasons we're going after him is the guys who are Tea Party guys um, or, or conservatives in the House, he stripped them of their committee assignments. He was the guy that declared war on conservatives, declared war on the grassroots. So we're just saying, OK, we'll fight back, John Boehner. You got a lot of special interest groups. That's OK. The people are very strong and we need to send a message. So again, we're asking people to go to primaryboehner.com. And I don't know if you were with us for the beginning of the show, but we had some sound bites from uh, some liberal people who have been supporters of Obamacare talking about how they are fed up. Ron Fournier, Kirsten Powers, uh, Rick Unger, who was on our show yesterday. Do you think that the Obamacare issue here and all these problems, the litany of issues that we see day in and day out are driving people uh, to maybe Democrats who were voting Democrat maybe to independents? Or do you think they might actually be driving them over to uh, Tea Party groups and grassroots groups? Well, I just want to say welcome to the Tea Party, and uh, we were ahead of you a couple of years. That's okay. We welcome you with open arms. Uh, now, I, do, I don't think they're going. I don't think those folks I mentioned are. But in general, um, certainly a lot of people I'm might just, be more interested. Of course, I'm just I'm just saying in general right, and having right. a little bit of fun with them as well. But again, we you know this is not the, this Obamacare mess is not a surprise to guys like us. This is exactly what we said was going to happen, and it, we we also are talking about what's going to happen with the raising of the debt ceiling with the the omnibus bill, the, the outrageous spending, the growth of government, all these things we talked about, the Edward Snowden thing we warned people about a while ago. So, you know, maybe they should listen to us instead of just attacking us all the time. All right. So who would be the best speaker if, if not John Boehner? Funny you should say that. Ask me why I can't answer that. OK, why can't you answer that? Well, I'm part of what they consider a PAC now, Political Action Committee. And thanks to McCain-Feingold, which I like to call the Incumbent Protection Act, I can't talk about things like that. It's against the law. How about that? Well, maybe, you know, and again, I'm not a, a lawyer here by any stretch of the imagination, but what if we're asking Rusty Humphreys as just an American citizen? If we go ahead I and wish I could. I can. Nice try. You, you still can. All right. More no, evidence of how these regulations are holding us all back. What? More, more evidence of how these how government regulations are holding us all back, Rusty. Absolutely. There's, I mean, again, it's to protect these incumbents uh, so they can continue to pay off the fat cats. And uh, again, all we're trying to do, you know, people want to demonize the Tea Party. Again, all we're talking about is this government's gotten out of control. It's too big. It's too expensive. Let's slow it down. All right. So as you, mentioned, as you mentioned, Rusty, you know, Boehner has the support of the establishment and perhaps mm -hmm. big business as well. If you fail in this, Will just raising awareness be in, in some way uh, some sort of a success for you in this? Absolutely, because all these guys care about is one thing, their power and their cushy little jobs. And so we're going to say if you continue to go down the wrong path, we're going after you. All right, Rusty Humphrey, so good to talk to you. Tell us you where too. folks can go if they want to learn more about uh, the issue here. PrimaryBainer.com. Boehner spells it weird, B-O-E-H-N-E-R, PrimaryBainer.com. All right, Rusty, thanks for being with us. We'll have you back soon. Now, guys, what do you think of House Speaker John Boehner? Is his job in jeopardy, or can he outlast some of this heat he's taking right now? We want to hear from you. You can reach out to us on social media, me personally, at John B underscore Newsmax, or at Newsmax TV, uh, hashtag America's Forum. Of course, you can always email us or find us on Facebook as well. And when we come right back, did one U.S. congressman retire, or re how did one U.S. congressman return over a million dollars to the government? We'll have a special interview with Texas Congressman Kevin Brady coming up after the break.